Good morning, everybody, and greetings from Jerusalem. So one of the uh, incidents that takes place in this week's Torah portion is the death of Aaron. Aaron, of course, being the brother of Moses and one of the great leaders of the Jewish people during the time that they left Egypt and traveled for 40 years in the desert before they entered the land of Israel. And we read about the death of Aaron, and then immediately afterwards, it says that the Jewish people were attacked by one of their enemies, the Canaanite king, attacked the Jewish people. And of course, the question is, why does the Torah put these two things next to each other in order? There's no coincidence. The Torah put things in a certain order because there are lessons that we're supposed to learn. So Rashi, one of the great, the great commentator on the Torah, points out that when Aaron died, the clouds of glory disappeared. Now these clouds of glory were these protective clouds, sort of like the Iron Dome of its time. And they protected the Jewish people as they traveled through the desert. And, and anyone who shot weapons or missiles or arrows at the Jewish people, these clouds reflected, deflected the attack and the Jewish people were safe and protected. When Aaron died, the Anane Hakavo, these clouds of glory, disappeared because they existed in the merit of Aaron. And they disappeared. And the nations around, the enemies, saw that the Jewish people were open to attack, that the clouds had disappeared, that the Iron Dome system was shut down, and they launched an attack. And they attacked the Jewish people. And we suffered many casualties. The question is, why are these clouds of glory, these protective clouds that saved and protected the Jewish people as we travel through the desert, connected specifically to Aaron? What is it about Aaron, the priest, Aaron, Aaron HaKohen, the brother of Moshe, that merited these clouds of glory? So if we look in Ethics of Our Fathers, Perkei Avot, it says that we should all strive to be like this, like Aaron, like Aaron, Aaron HaKohen. And it goes on to describe his qualities. And it says that he was Ohev Shalom, Verodev Shalom, and he loved peace and he pursued peace. He didn't just, he wasn't just, I'm in favor of peace. We're all in favor of peace. He actually ran after it. He pursued it. He took active steps to try to bring Shalom, to try to bring peace, unity, harmony, not just internationally and globally, but within families, within marriages, within relationships. He was the great peacemaker. He brought people together. He was responsible for the unity of the Jewish people during the time that he was alive. The achdut, the oneness, the closeness, the connection that they all felt for each other, the respect, the tolerance that they had for one another was all because of Aaron and his attitude and his perspective and what he taught them and what he demonstrated and modeled for them. So because the Jewish people are unified through Aaron and through his amazing quality of peacemaking and bringing people closer together, the Jewish people merited to be protected from their enemies. You see, people make a mistake. They think that our biggest problem in Israel today is the Iranians or Hamas or whoever it is out there that wants to attack us. That's not the truth. The truth is that the biggest problem that Jew Jewish people have today is our own inability to unite, to be one, to be a people, to respect each other, to love each other, to honor each other, despite our differences and despite our unique approaches to Judaism and to life. That's what Aaron taught the Jewish people. And as long as he was alive, the Jewish people were united. They loved each other. And when there was love among the Jewish people, the clouds of glory protected us and surrounded us and prevented us from being harmed by our enemies. When he died and those lessons were forgotten, the clouds disappeared and we were attacked. So a tremendous important lesson for us to take away from this week's Parsha. We have to be one as a people. We can be different. We can look different. We can feel different. We can practice different. But we have to love each other and respect each other and reach out to each other and be proactive in our attempts to try to unify the Jewish people in any possible way we can through our communities, through our families. And that's one of the most important lessons from our portion, Torah portion, that applies every bit as much today as it did then. Wishing you all a wonderful Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom, a Shabbos of peace, a Shabbos of harmony, a Shabbos of love. Wishing you all a good Shabbos, Shabbat Shalom from Yerushalayim.